everyone, Plant from Blue Collar Scale Customs. Hope everyone had a great week. Hope everyone's having a great weekend. Uh, I'll get to the Chevelle here in a moment, and I'll give you a little update with what's going on with her. Uh, but uh, Monocar 50, 1589 reached out on a video I saw uh, the other night in the night about wet sanding. Kind of want to get a little bit more into it. Um, now, this is just how I do it, not saying it's right or the way to do it, but it's just how uh, I've been doing it, and uh, as far as results go, I'm happy with what I've been doing. Uh, these are uh, test spoons. I've been doing, I'll get into the, what's going on with these here in a moment. Uh, and y'all see, I mean, to me, they are shiny, they are pretty. Uh, you need to see the lamp right there. Uh, same thing with this one. Now, this one is the same, uh, was just as shiny as you can see, but it's dull right here because what I started off with, and what I was, what I typically do, is start off with 3,000 grit. Now, as you see, and like you see right here, if I just now I'm doing it, I'm doing this as, as a uh, dry. I normally do it wet, but just for uh, demonstration purposes, this, I'm just showing what you know what actually happens here. So, as you as you're sanding it. Right now, you see how uniform that is. This is what you're going. This is what you're going for when you when you uh, wet sand. Now, uh, typically, let me see if this one actually. There you go. So I can feel a little imperfection right there. Now, the paint, or the kind of paint this is, I mean, it, this is a 2K clear, so it's not really, uh, it's really not important as, you know, these are test spoons, just trying things out. So, as you see, now, something actually did get attached up here, or the lint from one of my, uh, microfiber towels and as you see in if you look right here I don't know if you can really see it obviously the, these are not specs these are actually uh, parts of the fiber that are in there but you see where it's a little shiny around each of the fibers what you want to do on a low spot like this is you want to keep sanding it until that goes away because you want it uniform such as this. Now, once you get this done, then what you want to do is you want to do a 4,000 sheet. Now, one thing I will say uh, what helps out a little bit is if you take a permanent marker and you write 4,000 or even just 4K on, on here because once you get down to this part and this is all you have left, you, I mean, unless you can know by feel, you're not going to know what grid it is. So it's always kind of good just randomly put down 4K, 5K, whatever the case is. Now, this is 4K or 4,000. I start off with three. So then what you want to do, you, Using a clean spot. Now, take this, and as you're sanding it, now you're starting to now you see the light or the shine is starting to come back. Even add a little water to it. Okay, then 
Same procedure. You can take 5,000. And it's starting to come back again. And then basically, I don't really have much sandpaper. Uh, I did, but I don't know all what happened to them. But basically, the thing is that once you get down to this point, point, then you will start taking your uh, your your uh, polishing compounds. You got a coarse, medium, and a fine, and you start working your way up. Now on 2K clear, it dries rock hard. So I typically use a uh, a Dremel or a rotary tool to help buff it out, and it and it works just fine. And I top it off with McGuire's uh, Scratch X remover. So this is ba that's basically what you want to do. Now this is just baby but smooth already. So it you know if it was actually an orange peel, you would see the low spots, and then basically now something like this. If it had orange peel, it, you know, yeah, start with 3,000. If it doesn't turn out the way, you know, if it's not working or if it's taking too long, you may need to go down to a 2,500, may need to go to 2,000. Just got to keep in mind is that you're taking off material. But once you find the grit that you can actually work with, then you start working with that all the way around, and then you start working your way back up. And it's, you know, 2,000, you go to 2,500, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, all the way up to 12 if you want to do that. Um, now, in some cases, some panels may not need to be as, as bad or you may not need, you know, like the roof and the trunk. You know, I, well, I did this whole Chevelle. I did the whole Chevelle in 3,000 grit and you can still see some of the orange peel right here. I'm not worried about that because this car is going to get re-cleared. Now, I went along and I had to sand it down because I actually had, you, you can still see some of the spots right here, but I had a bad spot right here that was, uh, uh, my airbrush started spitting out a little bit. It was my fault. Uh, there were some garbage that was in the paint when I sprayed it but the thing is is that you know I went along and used 3000 and I kept up with it until I got that spot out now the spots no longer there so now this car needs to get uh, washed needs to get wiped down need to let it dry and then I want to re-clear it and we're gonna go from there with it uh, but so, and then, you know, but as you were saying, you're wanting to add some more color to the, uh, so some like, you know, you're wanting to add more color or you're adding stripes to the paint job, you know, that's fine. But, you know, I just want to kind of give a little more of a better demonstration as far as what I, what I was, you know, what I had said. So that way, you know, maybe help, hopefully it helps you uh, with your wet sanding. Now, as far as these spoons go, uh, I'm not going to show you the other one because it's kind of dull now because I wet sanded it. But these are uh, different uh, shades. Uh, this is actually uh, both of this is primer black. This is a dark gray, and this is obviously a uh, white primer. And I also did a. Uh, also did a light gray primer and this here it's a no name color the reason it's no name is because uh, Paul over from Pro Scale Models International Modeler uh, me and him have been working on uh, coming up with a paint color for uh, my uh, 91 or 92 SS uh, from AMT. Now, you can't really see it. You see something in person. Uh, you really see it on the black primer because I was testing it out because the whole point is trying to make it go from, uh, you know, like when you turn the light on it, you know, it, you see the red. 
it's really faint on the camera, but you can really see it uh, more so in person. Uh, but I want the red to be a little more vibrant. So he's, you know, me and him are kind of going back and forth a little bit, talking about what we can do. Uh, he's got some stuff in the works now. So um, once he gets it done, you know, if it, you know, meets, you know, what I'm looking for, then we'll go from there with it. Uh, I'll announce it. So will he, uh, if he wants to sell it, he, he's more than welcome to sell it. Uh, hopefully it'd be something that, you know, everyone likes and all that. But so anyway, uh, I know I'm kind of talking fast. I'm just trying to kind of get this, keep it short and sweet, but uh, kind of let you see where I'm, but you know, I'm tired and probably here the 3D printer in the background running. Uh, I've been, I was having issues with it. Uh, made some changes, got, you know, did a little maintenance work on it. And so far it seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, it still needs some tweaking, but it's doing well enough to get the job done. But I still need to get it to where I want it to be. But can I give an update on the Chevelle? Uh, so here is the uh, performance gauges. Uh, there is like a little uh, compartment right here. I think it's an ashtray. But I don't care. I don't smoke. So it wouldn't do me no good. So I went along and attached the gauges there. Kind of give you give you an update with what how the Chevelle is looking so you can see the dust all right here but I got the 19's up front the 20's in the back the uh, mag SS wheels I got the uh, Baldwin motion decal set on it there's the interior the, uh, with the you know, when I really do like the seat inserts. Sorry, I'm not you know moving this around too much. I got the other header I need to install, but I got the motor set in. I got the passenger side header on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm right now. I'm kind of like you know make sure I'm tweaking the exhaust. Make sure the exhaust is going to fit nice and neat. I still got to paint the engine bay black. I need to detail the battery a little bit and then the wash reservoir. I need to get the uh, master cylinder in there and the heater box. But the Chevelle is actually coming along pretty nice. Uh, here is the rear bumper. I went along and re chromed. And here is, and here is the grill. Now, I got the center part painted body color, and I also got it clear. So now, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and tape all that off, and then get this resanded, and then rechrome this, and then that's basically going to be ready to rock and roll. Um, that's roughly about it. So. Uh, you know, Chevelle's coming along pretty good. I'm hoping to be done within the next couple of weeks. Need to make that deadline for the uh, less than a thousand group, uh, less than a thousand subs uh, group build. So and then I'm gonna be working on the Supras uh, for Paul's group build and uh, Pro Scale group build, and then I will uh, get started on the Dart. At this end as well and go from there so all right everybody that's it just want to kind of do a uh, touch uh, reach out to model car 1589 about how I do my wet sanding uh, feel free to uh, message me and you know if you have any more questions I'm happy to help as any way I can so other than that, that's it for right now. So, like I said, hope everyone has a great weekend. 
Hope everyone had a great week. Y'all stay safe. To all my uh, friends out there, uh, Ed, One Team Garage is over in Florida. Y'all stay safe, man. Uh, Y'all got a nasty storm coming y'all way. Stay safe. All right. So until then, y'all take care. Bye.